What's up everybody back with the Magnum Quest video and in this one I got five essential tips to help you with the under palace feature in the game So everything you need to know just to get through it and then to have a basic understanding of how to speed run it for those leaderboard rewards Let's get it Before I dive into this, I just want to point out a few things. Challenging difficulty, which has a chance, not guaranteed, to award the max possible rewards may just not be possible for you regardless of the calamity level, which I'm going to be covering very soon. Because you may not be able to make it to that final maze level, or if you do, you may not even be able to beat the final boss due to time running out or your team just getting melted. Players wanted repeatable content, and now they gave something repeatable for the player base to do that gives good rewards. Some of those would be like the Chest of Lights being a for star map progression. So yes, it may be boring to some, but you are missing out on resources if you choose not to do this. However, I will say if going for 30 chest of lights on challenging difficulty, um, and in my opinion, that's the best thing you can get, um, it can be a nightmare. Um, for the majority, based off what I've read and from what I've experienced, it's always a nightmare. Um, no one wants nightmares. You become sleep deprived, not knowing if you're awake or not. Plus, there's a chance you might see Frey. <laughs> what I will say is they could definitely give it a facelift to help improve the fun factor every month uh, or something like that by changing up the NPCs, changing the final boss, changing the map layouts, or somehow further lowering the interaction animations because these do take up quite a lot of time. But these are things that can be Victory optimized. Now. I think the game mode itself is fine and I actually enjoy it. I'm almost at the tip section of the video, but I wanted to give a brief understanding of how the reward system works because it can be a little confusing if you're new to the game. Uh, so for the Under Palace, these are the rewards you will get when you complete a full maze run and entering each portal room on each maze level. Uh, most of these reward values are RNG, meaning randomly generated. The only ones that I want to focus on right now are the top row from Chest of Lights to Dragon Shards. I'm not saying these other here don't matter. The barrel is nice, the XP is definitely much needed, but the top is where you're going to see the fluctuation. So how do you get these values? Um, going forward, all of these values and everything I'm talking about is going to be based off challenging difficulty, as that's what I'm most familiar with. So for 30 Chest of Lights, you will be obtaining this from the 4th Maze level boss, which is either going to be Sir or Kados. For 8 normal summons, you will be getting 2 from the 1st maze level boss, which is going to be Gus, and then 6 from the 3rd maze level boss, which is going to be Julian. However, most of the time you're going to be getting the base amount, which is 2. For 10 faction summons, you will be getting from the 5th maze level final boss, which is fair. Um, however, you will get either the base value of 4, which is the more common, or the max value, which is 10. Um, and then for 2400 Dragon Shards, you will be getting 300 from the second maze level boss Fang. However, most of the time you will be getting the base amount, which is 100. Then you're going to be getting 100 from the fourth maze level boss, which is going to be Sir or Kados, like I mentioned. And then you're going to be getting 2000 shards um, from the fifth maze level boss, which is going to be fair. However, you can get either the base value of 250 or 2000. Um, so now it's time for the tips. Grab a coffee it's time to stretch those legs and get right down to the tips. So tip number one, NPC selection. Honestly, a lot of the NPCs in this game mode are terrible for you, meaning they give negative effects. It's important to know which ones to interact with and what the outcome of your decisions will be. Uh, so what I've done is compile a list of what all the NPCs do in a Google document, among other things for the Under Palace. I know, I know, I'm really evolving right now. I have no idea how to use this, so I'm learning this day by day. It will be in the pinned comment down below. It's faster for me to update until I release the video, plus I can make changes easier. Uh, so for this tip, I'm only going to show a couple NPCs that I consider very important and then the rest you can refer to that Google Doc that I just mentioned for the benefits or the negative effects. Just remember NPC buffs only last for that maze level you get them on. They will be gone when you go to the next one. So for the first NPC, I'm going to be talking about the Faithful Knight aka Arthur. Options seen on the screen are right here. Um, the medicine tastes sweet, uh, which basically all healing spells have double the effect. And then if you ignore him, nothing happens. So then for my verdict, uh, you're going to want to take the Medicine Taste Sweet option. You get double the healing. Just remember, this can be a buff alongside attack buffs, such as from the NPC Soul or Garath. But what it doesn't say is that it gives you the Execute buff. You may be familiar with this from the Trial or the Fairhaven. 
um, so that enemies with low HP are instantly defeated. But just remember, you will lose out on that energy gained for your hero that defeats an enemy. It's still a huge help for faster clearing or just clearing in general. Distressed Assassin, aka Cyan. So the options here are going to be I help. Um, you're going to lose 5 seconds of Hourglass of Battle Time. And just remember, for Osishi, you gain 5 seconds. And then for the other option, put Garbage in my mouth. No one really wants that. You're going to fight the enemy setup, and then you're going to lower your Calamity by 1. So for the verdict, you're um, whether speed farming or just trying to finish the maze, you're always going to want to fight the enemy setup and then that's going to lower your calamity. Unless you feel your calamity is just too high and then you're not going to be able to defeat the fight within 5 seconds. So if that's the case, then for speed farming, I would take option 1. A tip you may not know is if you do choose to fight and you see the enemy setup has either Sorsha or Viera, which are terrible to run into when you're speed running, um, you can simply back out of the battle screen and then back in and it's going to swap to another. You can only do this once but it's a very handy trick. We have the Graceful Vampire aka Lysidus aka the Friendly Looking Vampire. For the options you got Request of Battle Hourglass, um, your Hourglass of Battle Time is increased by 10 seconds and your Calamity increases by 2. And then the other option, I prefer your Heart more, you're going to fight the enemy setup and then lower your Calamity level by 2. Um, so for the verdict, always take the time increase of speed running. If you're just trying to finish the maze, I would fight the enemy setup and then drop your calamity to make things easier. The mystic creature from another world, uh, the cute fox. Options here are to give him some water, which is going to give all your heroes full energy. Um, give him some food, which is going to give all your heroes full HP and then pick it up, you're actually going to lose 5 seconds of Hourglass of Battle Time. So for the verdict, you're always going to want to give water for speed farming or just trying to complete the maze, um, unless you know your heroes have full energy, and then you can give them some food for your HP. Um, now moving on over to tip number 2, portal boxes with the box solutions and then the torch room trick. So mazes level 1, 2, and 4, depending on the map layout, which I'm going to cover in tip number 4, have a chance for the portals to be one of the following. You have the torches, all torches need to be lit at once, the memory barrels, uh, matching two barrels with the same faction, box puzzles, um, sliding the boxes onto the lit squares, or crystal, lighting up all the crystals in a specific sequence. So for maze level 1 portal, regardless of the map layout, it will always give you the same gold reward. The box puzzle is rather simple, so it shouldn't require thinking since there's not many steps involved. Um, as for the torch puzzle, or any torch puzzle, there's actually a trick to get double the rewards. I have no idea if this is ever going to get fixed, but it's been in the game since the Under Palace was introduced. The easiest way I found to complete this is once you only have one torch lit, simply click the one that's diagonal of it so it will light up the three remaining. Um, once you light up all the torches, you get your reward. You can simply click on any other torch besides the last one you clicked, click it back, and boom, you get your rewards again, plus another chest so you can choose another equipment buff. No need to exit the portal, no need to click the first equipment chest, quick, easy, and you get double the rewards. You can do this for every portal torch puzzle you encounter. Uh, Maze level 2 portal is unique because I do believe the box puzzle only lowers Calamity by 5 and doesn't give you that added time to your Hourglass of Battle. I could be wrong here, so comment down below, but I don't think I've ever seen it give me that. I will show you the sequence on the screen of how to complete it. Maze level 3 portal is a room where you either lower your Calamity by 3 or add 10 seconds to your Hourglass of Battle Time. There's no puzzle here, you just simply need to look around for those 3 Mirage type squares. And then finally, Maze level 4 portal box puzzle can either lower Calamity, I actually forgot this but I will put it on the screen when I figure it out, or adds 12 seconds to your Hourglass of Battle Time and I'll show the sequence right here. Tip number three, um, ideal setups for the various situations you will encounter, meaning NPC fights, mini bosses, and then the final boss. At the time of this recording, it's going to be fair. However, this could change. I'm only going to cover a few setups here. If you want to see the rest, you can check out that Google document that I mentioned because it's going to have a lot of alternatives. Um, so the first one is the optimal setup you'll be using leading up to the final maze boss. Sometimes if I'm feeling a little spicy, um, I'm going to use Amelia on the first maze boss Gus since on average it leads to faster battle clear time. But without Flan or Panda, you are heavily hoping to see the Mystic Fox so it can give all your heroes full energy before seeing those uh, mentioned enemies like Ares or Alden. Oh, and if you see Sorsha or Viera, uh, Sorsha is very dumb and ruins all the fun. If speed running, I would probably reset because she drags your time out drastically with all those revivals. Um, so the MVP starting out is going to be Ekra and Sir for that quick damage at the start. 
Then once you get the battle going and your Winden becomes full energy, he turns into the MVP for the rest of the maze. Uh, the reason being is when you defeat an enemy, you gain energy. So manualing Winden's ultimate at the start of the battle should warrant a full enemy team wipe, depending on your calamity, enemies, uh, investment of your hero, but usually it's a full wipe and all those defeated enemies make him full energy again for the next battle. So the second and third setup are gonna relate to the final boss, which is fair. Um, so the first option, if the Calamity debuff is minus magical damage, regardless of how you're going to go about the maze, Shale cannot do nearly as much damage as she normally does, so she needs help in order to achieve a fast, easier clear. This is the current hybrid lineup that I've been running because Fair is from the Forest Faction, so wild heroes do 25% more damage. Hista is the optimal wild hero because she does awesome damage and is physical damage. Shale is the optimal DPS hero for bosses who deals magical damage, so we now have a physical plus magical damage. However, if lacking a good Shale, you can opt in Ares, uh, but you will have a slower time. Um, I keep Hista in front of Sir for direct heals because she's very squishy. I typically have to retry a few times depending on my Calamity level due to Hista dying so fast. Like she'll instantly just jump in and die. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You can always tinker around with that hero positioning. Uh, second option is if the Calamity debuff is minus physical damage. This is the fastest lineup I have found due to Winden buffing Shale for more damage. I would place either Winden or Shale in front of Sir for direct heals for survivability or for uh, star map swift victory purposes. You can switch Sinia if you have survivability problems for Panda, but based off my testing it will be at a cost of burst damage, but this setup also does very well. Um, many other setups I have are in the Google Doc if these three just mentioned don't work well for you, and also depending on your account progression. Um, so tip number four is going to be understanding the map layout. Each maze level has four different map layouts. These will determine factors such as speed running, um, what puzzle portals you will get. I won't spend too much time on this because remember that Google Doc that I've mentioned many times already? Well, here is what it looks like when you click on the map layout sheet. All maze levels are going to be here and the map layout showing the portal, the boss, the NPC icons, the best route to take, etc. So we can take this as an example. We have maze level two, map layout number one. You can see this is the best route for the puzzle and boss portal. Unfortunately, there is a black hole and it'll be right here. I really hate seeing these when I'm speed running because there is a chance for it to give you minus five seconds off your hourglass of battle time. Now we're going to be coming up on an NPC followed by another one right here, and then the last one before the puzzle portal room. Uh, now this puzzle portal is going to be crystals based off the image, and here we go, it's crystals. So each map layout has a specific puzzle portal. Um, and finally, finally tip number five, understanding the calamity level. Um, each increased difficulty has harder calamity debuffs, normal, hard, and challenging. Just remember, challenging is needed in order to try and place on the leaderboards and get those rewards. The leaderboard rewards were not always like this. Before all they gave was a frame, now it actually gives you some incentive to go beyond just trying to get the max rewards. Um, as first to second gets an extra 30 chest of lights plus 1000 shards. Ranking 4 to 10 gets 10 faction summons plus 500 shards. And then ranking 11 to 30 gets 5 regular summons plus 200 shards. The Calamity level debuffs are important because it's going to dictate how you approach the final boss, which at the time of the recording is fair, and it will be based off those two lineups or setups, whatever you want to call them that I mentioned in tip number three. Between Calamity levels one through eight, it's repeated buffs. Enemy attack, enemy crit rate, however on level nine plus, the enemies will start to get either a minus magic damage taken slash given, or minus physical damage taken slash given, accumulating buff. This will determine your final maze boss ideal setup that I gave examples of earlier. Earlier. This specific buff will rotate every two weeks, meaning two weeks is going to be magic and then two weeks is going to be physical. Uh, so that's it for the tips video. I will be making a separate video specifically for speedrunning six minutes or better, which should be coming out relatively soonish. Um, hopefully this gives some insight and allows more players to be able to reach those rankings for the leaderboard rewards or go up in difficulty while still being able to clear the maze. Leave a comment down below if you have anything to add or maybe improve on, and I'll be sure to update that Google document when I can. I do apologize if it's not mobile friendly. Um, I did open it up on my phone and it does seem okay. Um, so as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.